When I was recording the last story I recorded, which was The Troll by Julia Donaldson, which is fantastic, I was thinking, well, I'm not doing enough perhaps for some of you older children out there who perhaps would like to access books that are maybe something that you would find particularly interesting. Now, and I found this on my son's bookcase. It's called It's How to Train Your Dragon. There's a whole series of these books. This is the first one. And I thought, well, why not um, have a go at reading it myself? You can tell me if you like it. If you want me to read more, you're going to have to give me the thumbs up. If I don't see any thumbs up, then I probably won't continue reading. But I will read you a couple of chapters. It might be something that you might be interested in reading yourself. It's great to watch a film. It's always good to watch a film. But there's something about the book, the original, that tells us so much more. All the detail that perhaps we miss when we watch a film. And I absolutely, I love these films. So um, anyway, I'm going to have a go. If you give me the thumbs up or write me a comment to say that you'd like me to continue reading them, I will. Or perhaps you will go out and get yourself a copy if it's something that you're interested in. First, catch your dragon. Long ago, on the wild and windy Isle of Burke, a smallish Viking with a longish name stood up to his ankles in snow. Hiccup, horrendous Haddock III, the hope and heir to the tribe of the hairy hooligans, had been feeling slightly sick ever since he woke up that morning. Ten boys, including Hiccup, were hoping to become full members of the tribe by passing the Dragon Initiation Programme. They were standing on a bleak little beach at the bleakest spot on the whole bleak island a heavy snow was falling pay attention screamed gobber the belch the soldier in charge of teaching initiation this will be your first military operation and hiccup will be the commander in commanding the team oh no not hiccup groaned dog's breath the der brain and most of the other boys you can't put a hiccup in charge, sir. He's useless. Hiccup horrendous Haddock the Third, the hope and heir to the tribe of the hairy hooligans, wiped his nose miserably on his sleeve. He sank a little deeper into the snow. Anybody would be better than Hiccup, sneered Snotface Snotlout. Even fish legs would be better than Hiccup. Fishlegs had a squint that made him as blind as a jellyfish and he had an allergy to reptiles. Silence, roared Gobber the Belch. The next boy to speak has limpets for lunch for the next three weeks. There was an absolute silence immediately. Limpets are a bit like worms and a bit like snot and a lot less tasty than either. Hiccup will be in charge and that is an order, screamed Gobber who didn't know, do noises quietly than screaming. He was a six and a half foot giant with a mad glint in his one working eye and a beard like exploding fireworks. Despite the freezing cold, he was wearing tiny shorts and a teeny weeny deerskin vest that showed off his lobster red skin and bulging muscles. He was hold, holding a flaming torch in his gigantic fist. Hiccup will be leading you, although he's admittedly completely useless because Hiccup is the son of the chief and that's the way things go with us Vikings. Where do you think you are? The Republic of Rome? Anyway, this is the least of your problems today. You are here to prove yourself as a Viking hero and it is an ancient tradition of the hooligan tribe that you should. Gobba paused dramatically. First, catch your dragon. Ooh, suffering scallops, thought Hiccup. Our dragons are what set us apart, bellowed Gobber. Lesser humans train hawks to hunt for them, horses to carry them. It is only the Viking heroes who dare to tame the wildest, most dangerous creature on earth. Gobber spat <laughs> solemnly into the snow. There are three parts to the dragon initiation test. The first and most dangerous part is a test of your courage and skill at burglary. If you wish to enter the hairy hooligan tribe, you must first catch your dragon. And that is why, continued Gobba at full volume, I have brought you to this scenic spot. Take a look at wild dragon cliff itself. The ten boys tip their heads backwards, 
cliff loom dizzyingly high above them, black and sinister. In summer, you could barely even see the cliffs as dragons of all shapes and sizes swarmed over it, stapping and biting and sending up a cacophony of noise that could be heard all over Burke. But in winter, the dragons were hibernating and the cliff fell silent, except for the ominous low rumble of their snores. Hiccup could feel the vibrations through his sandals. Now, said Gobba, do you notice those four caves above half, about halfway up the cliff group, roughly in the shape of a skull? The boys nodded inside that cave. That would be the right eye of the skull is the dragon nursery, where there are at this very moment 3,000 young dragons having their last few weeks of winter sleep. Ooh, muttered the boys excitedly. Hiccup swallowed hard. He happened to know considerably more about dragons than anybody else there. Ever since he was a small boy, he'd been fascinated by the creatures. He'd spent an hour after long hour dragon watching in secret. Dragon spotters were thought to be geeks and nerds, hence the need for secrecy. And what Hiccup had learned about dragons told him that walking into a cave with 3,000 dragons is an act of madness. No one else seemed too concerned, however. In a few minutes, I want you to take one of these baskets and start climbing the cliff, commanded Gobber the Belch. Once you are at the cave entrance, you are on your own. I am too large to squeeze my way into the tunnels leading to the dragon nursery. You will enter the cave quietly, and that means you too, Warty Hog. Unless you want to become the first spring meal for 3,000 hungry dragons. <laughs> Gobba laughed heartily at his little joke, then continued. Dragons this size are normally fairly harmless to man, but in these numbers they will set upon you like piranhas. There'd be nothing left, even a fatso like you, warty hog. Just a pile of bones in your helmet. <laughs> so you will walk quietly through the cave and each boy will steal one sleeping dragon. Lift the dragon gently from the rock and place it in your basket. Any questions so far? Nobody had any questions. In the unlikely event that you do wake the dragons and you would have to be Idiotically stupid to do so, run like thunder for the entrance to the cave. Dragons do not like cold weather and the snow will probably stop them in their tracks. Probably, thought Hiccup. Oh, well, that's reassuring. I suggest that you spend a little time choosing your dragon. It's important to get one that the correct size for you. This will be the dragon that hunts fish for you and pulls down deer for you. You will catch the dragon that will carry you into battle later on when you are much older and a warrior of the tribe. But nonetheless, you want an impressive animal. So a rough guide would be choose the biggest creature that will fit in your basket. Don't linger for too long in there. Linger? Or hiccup in a cave full of 3,000 sleeping dragons. I need not tell you, Gobba continued cheerfully, that if you return to this spot without a dragon, it is hardly worth coming back at all. Anybody who fails this task will be put immediately into exile. The hairy hooligan tribe has no use for failures. Only the strong ones can belong. Unhappily, Hiccup looked round at the distant horizon. Nothing but snow and sea as far as the eye could see. Exile it didn't look too promising either. Right, said Gobba briskly. Each boy take a basket to put their dragon in and we'll get along. The boys rushed to get their baskets, chattering happily and excitedly. I'm going to get one of those monstrous nightmares, ones with extra extendable claws. They're really scary, boasted Snoutlout. Oh, shut up, Snout, Snotlout. You can't, said Speedy Fist. Only Hiccup can have a monstrous nightmare. You have to be the son of a chief. Hiccup's father was Stoic the Vast, the fearsome chief of the hairy hooligan tribe. Hiccup, 
sneered Snotlout. It be as useless as this as he is at Bashy Ball. We'll be lucky if he gets one of the basic browns. The basic brown was the most common type of dragon, a serviceable beast, but without much glamour. Shut up and get into line, you miserable tadpoles, yelled Gobber the Belch. The boys scrambled into their places, baskets on their backs, and stood to attention. Gobber walked along the line, lighting the torch that each boy held in front of him from the great flare in his hand. In half an hour's time, you will be a Viking warrior with your faithful serpent at your side, or breakfasting with Wodan and Valhalla with dragon's teeth in your bottom, screamed Gobba with horrible enthusiasm. Death or glory, yelled Gobba. Death or glory, yelled eight boys back at him fanatically. Death, thought Hiccup and Fishleg sadly. Gobba paused dramatically with a horn to his lips. I think this could possibly be the worst moment of my life so far, thought Hiccup to himself as he waited for the blast of the horn. And if they shout much louder, we're going to wake up those dragons before we even start. <coughs> Gobba blew the horn. I'm going to stop there. If you like it, you want me to read more then give me the thumbs up and I will continue. I hope you enjoyed it. It's really funny and I will catch up with you soon.